I'm Peter Nelstedt. I run a company called Sensagen. We are building the future of uh, non-animal testing. And uh, as we are on a path to build that future, we're doing so in an interesting commercial and growth-oriented way. So in the last three years, the company has grown 300%. We have driven growth this year organically 25%. We are doing that while expanding our gross margin. This year, we are at 71%. And we also have a strong balance sheet and are now financially positioned to allocate that, those money into driving R&D-driven growth so that we can continue on the growth path for many years. And our uh, uh, profit situation is always improving. And this year, we have cut the loss into a third and uh, are now for a couple of quarters hovering around the break-even mark. So, financially the company is doing great and uh, we are in, uh, on a mission to uh, lead the shift to ethical, non-animal toxicity and efficacy testing. Thereby we can reduce animal testing but, but also improving product reliability and safety. That means we will bring safer and more sustainable products to market and also enhance the safety for manufacturing environments, for biopharma, for instance. The market for non-animal testing is in a high growth mode. So uh, last five years, it has been growing around five, 7%. We calculate our addressable market to be about $3 billion. That's the market where we have tests that uh, can, uh, can work to, to uh, meet the customer needs. And we think the market will continue to grow because there are a number of important drivers. There is animal testing bans. Regulators uh, do not want to sacrifice and, uh, and drive innovation with, with animal testing. Uh, there is ESG engagement going on at larger companies. And then, of course, the, the human relevance is a very important driver. Animals are not always human relevant. Human models and new technology are more human relevant and provide, provides a higher predictivity of efficacy and safety. And, third, and fourthly, cost and time. Usually a non-animal test method is less costly and counting in the total time where you don't need to go to an ethical committee you reduce time, and, and time is of the essence in industry. The regions which are important for our services and products are Europe and North America. They comprise three quarters of the market. And uh, we are rather industry agnostic. Our solutions and tests work for cosmetics, medical devices, chemicals, pharmaceutical industry, and also in nutrition. So, who are we? We are a group with uh, a little over 30 employees, 33 employees, 20 here in Lund. In Lund, we have our non-animal toxicology expertise focused around skin sensitization. We also provide testing services, and we have developed the, our proprietary guard platform, which I will tell you a little bit more about shortly. In uh, a couple of years ago, we made an acquisition of a company in Milan, it complements uh, Sensagen because they provide the efficacy testing. So now we have both toxicology and efficacy, and they also have expertise around something called 3D tissue models and have developed their own spheroid organoid platform for bespoke testing with pharmaceutical companies. And the third component of our group is uh, ToxHub. It's a regulatory advisory group. And as we work across four different industries, we have need to guide clients through a rather sometimes very complex questions on how they should combine tests to answer regulatory questions. So, with this great team in place, we have been able to lead, lead and drive innovation and serve industry in a more end-to-end -end pattern. So, going forward, we will continue on this growth pattern. We want to combine organic growth with acquisition-driven growth. Our focus on the organic growth side is to generate direct sales, build re strong relationships with the largest organizations in the world, complement that with licensed sales to CROs who can target clients where we cannot reach ourselves, 
and drive an innovations pipeline where we constantly launch new solutions. And we work on something we call thought leadership. This means that we're investing into science together with our clients. We publish, we present, we are trying to be the voice of uh, skin sensitization testing in the world, and we have a good track record of doing so. And as I said, we have performed two very successful acquisitions, giving us an end-to-end -end capability. There are still end, end points of interest and so on, so we have an active M&A agenda. So I promised you that I would go into our GARD technology a bit more. So GARD is a genomics and machine learning based technology. We have a proprietary uh, cell line. It's a dendritic cell line central to the immune system response. This is important because the skin sensitization reaction is of course an immune reaction. We have identified 196 genes central to the skin sensitization reaction. These are on a, on a ship, and we are now able to uh, check unknown compounds on our cell model and measure the gene expression pattern versus a, and put that through a prediction model that we've developed. This gives us a very predictive response, 90 to 95 percent predictive capacity with the assay. It's a fantastic result as you look at the first generations in vitro assays, which are around the 80% mark. And when we have looked at animal data, the mouse models or guinea pig models, they are at 70 to 75% accuracy versus human data. The GARD method is the first genomics and machine learning method which has been standardized in the world for, from OECD. And it is addressing unmet customer needs because it can handle difficult to test compounds, complex mixtures, medical device systems. And it also provides potency information to establish safe dose levels. So, we have a great growth with this technology. We are focusing our sales effort on the top 100 global companies in the target industries. So far, if we take the cosmetics, chemical, and medical device, 300 top clients. We have 30, so 10% penetration of the top companies so far. This year, we got 31 new clients, and six are of this high category. And you can see that in 2023, we had 32 new clients in the whole year. So we're already at that level, meaning that we're expanding the new customer acquisition. And at the same time, we have a recurring revenue rate of 81%. So if we continue this pattern, we will have more new clients. We have a great recurrence rate. So the company is poised for continued growth. On average, we are looking at half a million for, uh, from uh, clients as a follow-on order. But this year, we had a follow-on order from the chemical industry. It was 1.3 million. So we know that the top clients are the ones which are more likely to recur and have higher uh, revenue potential. So who are then the clients testing with Guard? So here is a, a few that we have published scientific data with and also sold our capacities for. And you can see it's L'Oreal in the cosmetics, Sonova, leading hearing aid company from Switzerland, ExxonMobil, United States, Corteva, leading agrochemical company. So many organizations. So the other thing I said, what, what are we going to do to drive growth going forward? Well, we're going to invest in our capability and what we can, can do. We have three highly interesting growth projects. Number one, our dose response development of Guard enables clients to see a dose curve of a point of departure. It's very important for risk assessment, so it's not replacing our already approved test, it is adding capability to it, so it will be incremental growth once we get that OECD approved, and it is progressing. Second important uh, project is in the medical device sector. We work to get guard skin uh, approved or included in the ISO standard for biocompatibility. It's a huge market. If we can get guard skin as the first in vitro test uh, as a standard, it will open up great growth prospects for our company. And finally, we have, with VitroScreen, their development platform for spheroids and organoid testing, which in many ways can become the future of efficacy testing. So that's our third line of development.
And of course, we keep on investing in our base technology, looking at platform upgrades for gene expression analysis, which will allow us to serve advanced customer needs. So that's the way we want to, we have grown 300% in the past, and that's the way we're going to grow 300% going forward. So we are positioned for this new growth phase by continuing focus on top 300 clients with the direct sales capability that we have built, expand our commercial organization, continue to influence industry and be the leading voice. And now with a good R&D pipeline and a good great balance sheet, we're able to drive growth. And then we still have this interesting long-term strategic M&A agenda where we can accelerate growth further. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll start with a great question just, just came in. Why do we still have animal testing if GARD is an alternative? That's a very good question. I think uh, regulation takes time to, to shift. Um, and um, in Europe, we have, for instance, medical device. It is accepted with uh, non-animal testing. But companies also have to take the step. So I think it's a matter of continuing to produce great data and get, get approvals, and then we will move away. Mm. But do you think you said it's also a question of regulations, but is, it, but is it also convincing people or culture that needs to change? Or have we already done that? Yeah, I think, I think, so. I think to a degree. Uh, the, uh, the, it's very, you know, the FDA Modernization Act, which happened a year ago, uh, took away the uh, mandatory animal test before moving into uh, uh, clinical tests. So that's new, but I don't know how spread that knowledge still is. You engage a lot. Let's see if I can keep up. Could you comment on how a potential target for M&A would look like? So the, the M&A that we're driving is supposed to add profitability to the company and also add complementary endpoints. So we, we want to have a target Ideally, that means we can upsell more tests to, to certain clients. Um, we, we are now uh, 35 people. I don't think it's, uh, it, there is no really restriction in terms of size, but of course that, that might be the sort of number we're looking at. Mm -hmm. We have a live question in the audience. I'll give you another one. It's, they go out with a microphone. How will you make sure to continue to deliver sales growth? I think you actually answered that quite a bit, so I will go on. With rapid growth, following acquisitions or large, ex large expansions, the organization grows. How do you ensure a positive company's culture and align your goals? That's a great question. And I'm glad that you, you <laughs> somebody asked that question. I think we sometimes forget about that, that the people that we have in our companies are the ones working, developing the growth. We want to attract uh, great people that have an entrepreneurial spirit, and uh, we are working very, very clearly with, an, with our both active employment agenda, but also when we work with recruitments to, to secure that. Did you actually say now, so like we employ people that like uh, fast growth? <laughs> I, I, I think, you know, look, we're, we're, a, we're in a growth phase. We're an early stage company. What, what do we do to attract people? We can't pay them the highest salaries. Yeah, we, you, we, uh, they have to work harder than you do in, a, in, a, in, a, in sometimes larger organizations. So you work more for less money, what can you do to attract them? It's the future of building something new together. That's what we want people to be attracted by. Good, well, doing my job. Next question. All right, thank you for a really good presentation. So my question is quite technical. First of all, I really like the innovation pushing towards reducing animal use is very important. So your acquisition for the Vitro, um, screen. Vitro screen RA, making those organoids, that's a really great approach. But I wonder, do you actually manage to replicate the physiological conditions that you would normally have inside a lab animal? Or is it, uh, what, can you tell us a little bit more about the um, Yes. Technology. Yes, you're you're pointing to a very important uh, point about the spheroid and organoid. So, 
this, the, the technology we have is producing spheroids and organoids, something which is called scaffold-free. It means they are not you know, tied up to some artificial framework. It, they are created with something called hanging drop technology so that they orientate in space in a more natural pattern. And we have looked with, and I cannot go into every test that we've done, tried to find different uh, assessments of their morphology and, what, and their, and their um, uh, physical uh, function to mimic a more natural state. I think it's a very important question about producing organoids and spheroids. Yeah, I want to echo. Thank you for such engaging, uh, engaging and interesting questions. Our time has run up. Thank you very much, Peter Nelstedt-Sensagen. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.